everybody, Jeff Antoniak here, Digging Deeper Jazz Videos. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So today I wanna to talk about how to do some really powerful practicing and how to solve one of the biggest problems in uh, all of us who are trying to learn how to play jazz, the issue of how to work in the vocabulary, the licks, the devices that we're working on. It's one thing to practice it. How do we get it to come out on stage as we're playing? got a good story to actually pass on to you. This was a conversation I was lucky enough to have with Michael Brecker long ago and him telling me, uh, giving me a little perspective on uh, what this is about. So um, I tell you what, I'm going to start off and I'm going to play a couple choruses of blues for you and I want you to hear, uh, I'm going to think very consciously about sticking in a very particular prefab lick in a particular place and I want you to hear if you can hear where it is and what it is. My goal here is that you can't tell what I'm consciously wanting to play when. It's seamless. I want to talk to you about how to make what you're playing seamless like that. <laughs> Okay, so could you hear the lick that I was so consciously trying to fit into my playing? I'm not even going to tell you what it was. Well, okay, I'll tell you what it was. It was uh, this. This simple little thing. And I'm pretty sure I fit it in two, three, maybe four times in different places, different ways. So that's the goal. It's, gr it's a great lick to practice, but how do we get it into our playing? That, I think, is one of the biggest uh, questions. And now, so the story about Michael Brecker, I was talking to him, and, um, and I was, and essentially the conversation went, uh, what am I doing wrong, Mr. Brecker? Um, I'm practicing this stuff, and I'm practicing it, I'm practicing it, and like, I'll practice this thing for two or three weeks hours, many hours, and it doesn't come out in my playing. Like sometimes it takes me two or three weeks for something to come out in my playing. What am I doing wrong? By the way, this was as a grad student. My job was to practice eight hours a day. What am I doing wrong? And his answer was, huh, wow, that's really good if it comes out in your practice, you know, and you're playing in three or four weeks. Uh, what I'm practicing today will probably take two months to come out in my playing. And I was like, oh, oh. So, got it, a little perspective. So this is from one of the famous practicers of all time, Michael Brecker. So the point, one of the points was, this is hard work, so shut up and practice. <laughs> okay, got it, that was a good point. Another point was our heroes, Michael Brecker, one of the legendary improvisers, players, saxophonists, he worked his butt off to get where he was. That wasn't talent that he just kind of hung around and it all got beamed into his head. He worked hard on that stuff. And it takes a while for what you're working on now to process through and then come out of your playing. So again, that was, and, and he said like, yeah, that's the thing, man. Like that's the deal. Coming up with a new lick to practice is not hard. The internet is filled with videos that will give you cool licks. There's books everywhere that will give you cool licks. Finding the lick is not the problem. Getting it into your playing is the problem. That's what I want to talk about today. So this is uh, an exercise called the Asterix exercise. Um, I had a teacher show it to me years ago, and I actually did a video on this about a year, year and a half ago. And, but so many people have been asking me this question. So I think it was one of the early videos people didn't see. So I want to redo it here for all of you digging deeper folks who have been tuning in, thousands of people around the world. I appreciate it. This is one of the most powerful learning tools that I know. So let me put this sheet up on the uh, screen for you. It's a very simple concept. So there's three steps to it. Step number one is what are we working on? What's your lick of the day? For today, I picked a cool lick. It's, uh, I stole it from Illinois Jaquette, great uh, sort of swing uh, tenor player. And I remember the first time I heard this, I loved it. It is simply an augmented triad. 
coming down. That's it. It's an augmented triad. I mean, any of us could learn how to play that in about 14 seconds, right? So now how do we get it into our playing? But step one is identify what you're working on. A lot of us don't do that. We just get busy and spin our wheels or pick 42 things to work on. No, 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 no. This is uh, digging deeper. We dig one hole deeply. That's how we get better. Okay, so this is the, uh, the lick that I've chosen for today. The next thing, step two, is now let's pick our laboratory. In other words, what is a song we're working on? I want to work on this in the context of reality, real music. If, you're, if the problem is trying to fit our lick into our playing, so it comes out on a gig, it comes out on a concert, the imp, there's two implications there. One is, what's the lick? I have a lick I'm thinking about. The other is, I guess I'm playing songs on this concert or this imaginary gig that I have or whatever. What song? Where would you like it to come out? What song? So today I picked the blues. So those are two decisions. This particular lick, the augmented triad and the blues. I could have picked uh, a half diminished uh, altered dominant thing and I could have picked the song Caravan. It, so th very important, you have to pick what you're working on and the context that you're working on it with. Now I practiced for years working on specific ideas but with no context. I didn't have a song in mind. I didn't have a set of chord changes in mind. Bad Jeff. I could have saved myself like a decade, maybe two. So uh, that's very important. Now, step three here is the asterisk part. If you look on the sheet, you can see that in the blues, I put three asterisks. Those are arbitrary. I pick three spots. It's a 12-bar blues. I just picked one in each four-measure phrase. They could have been any measure with a dominant chord. So this particular lick happens to work nicely over dominant chords, not minor chords. There it is. I picked, uh, I picked three spots. Now, here's the assignment. Play the song over and over again, and in those three spots, you have to play the lick exactly as written. Again, I don't care what the lick is. If you want to learn this uh, augmented triad one, fantastic. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, we're here talking about the process. So now, let me do this. Let me play a little bit for you and see, can I plug that lick into those spots? Now, here's the thing. If you look on the sheet, these spots, there's a B-flat concert at the end of the first line. Now, there's an E-flat concert, and then I also picked one over an F concert. So I actually picked three spots in the song that have three different chords. So, oh, that ups the ante for me. I actually have to know this lick in three different keys. You may not want to start there. You may want to start just in one key. That would be fine by me perfectly fine. So let me do this. Right, two choruses. So I had six opportunities, three in one chorus, three in another. I totally missed the second chance. I think I got, so I guess I got five out of six, if you're like keeping score of this. I got five out of six. Now here's the thing. They sounded like licks, right? I was pasting them in. It was pretty clear I played something for three measures, then pasted this thing in. A terrible Photoshop job, right? Missed the second one. By the way, I did that on purpose. I know how to do this. So, um, but here's the thing. This is the uh, progression that you'll go through. So the first thing is, can you even remember to try to play it in the first spot? So you have to stay very engaged. You have to remember the assignment. So it is so hard just to remember in the fourth measure to do this. Give this a try. You're gonna love this and you're gonna be shocked at how hard it is. Because once you get improvising for three measures, you're on a roll. You don't want to stop and use this new bit of vocabulary. It doesn't occur to you. Right, it doesn't occur to you. That's why we're doing the exercise. You're forcing this bit of vocabulary into your playing. 
So the first thing is, can you even remember to do it in the places where you put your little asterisks? By the way, um, the asterisk, it could be, uh, you could draw a little bunny there or an Eiffel Tower or whatever. It doesn't have to be an asterisk. It could be anything at all. I just put a little, you know, it's easy to do. Um, so now, once you can kind of remember to play it, now can you play the lick sort of correctly? I got the lick more or less correctly. Okay, now this may take you two weeks or four weeks to, to get to this point. We'll see how long it takes. Depends on the complexity of the lick, et cetera, et cetera. Here's where it gets cool. So now you've really learned the particular bit of vocabulary. By the way, you've played hundreds, maybe thousands of courses of blues to this point. That's not a bad thing for your practice. Here's the cool thing. Now, to make this lick disappear, to make it not sound glued in in the fourth measure, at some point you'll have the brain power to think, huh, this lick starts on a high B flat. So maybe in the first, second, third measure, I should play something that leads me there. Ah. So in other words, the exercise now becomes not about playing the lick in the fourth measure. It, come, it becomes about how do you get to the lick. So it really becomes about the third measure. This is where it gets very slick. It also becomes what happens after the lick. How do you play out of the lick? How do you blur the line so it doesn't sound so pasted in? So let me give it a try now and see if I can do a better job of making the lick sort of fit into my plank. Yes, you know what the lick is. Yes, you know where to expect it. But I'm gonna see if I can be a little slicker with the lick now. it in there, right? You heard it every time, but I hope I was able to play into it or play out of it. And there's other ways. There's, there's a lot of ways to make the lick disappear. One way that I think I used at some point was to play the lick and then play it again, maybe on a different pitch level, play it again. When you play it two or three or four times, sure, you're drawing attention to it, but now it sounds like a theme that you're developing. It's not one lick that you pasted in. It would be hard to know where it got pasted in. Again, so it's like cutting and pasting on a word processor or with Photoshop or editing music or something like that. You want the edits to disappear so it sounds natural. So this is a fantastic structure, I guess, for uh, practicing this. And, and that word structured actually reminds me of an email I got from, from one of you out there, one of the listeners, talking about somebody that had been spinning their wheels really for sort of a long time and someone who really... Uh, prided themselves on being able to learn different things and, and learn pretty well and learn quickly in their regular job. But yet with music, they were lacking a structure. And so they have found something here at Digging Deeper, which I love, this structure. And right, understanding how to practice this stuff makes it go so much better, having a structure to our practice. And um, you've been hearing me go on and on about jazz wire. Now, that's what's going to happen at Jazzwire, by the way, launching September 1st, the structure. So you can get the structure here on the free videos, perfectly fine. When you want to dig even deeper, when you want a structure that goes from week to week, that's what we're going to be doing at Jazzwire. The other thing is the community. Structure is fantastic because it gives us sort of a step-by-step -step procedure, right? But the community I love because it adds... Um, first of all, we're just talking to friends, nothing wrong with that, talking about music. And so many of us don't have people at our level to talk to, but it adds a little accountability when we're talking to people about what we want to do and support, right? So all this is going to be in spades. So I hope you consider Jazzwire. It's going to be fantastic. So getting back to this exercise, that is the long and short of it. So the three steps, so easy to understand, but so many of us don't even say, this is what I'm practicing this week, this one thing. 
Dig a deep hole. What is the one thing you want to learn this week? Step one, what's the lick? Okay. Step two is now what is the context where I'm going to put this lick? That's where everybody blows it. We think the lick is the thing. Uh uh. The context is the thing. Where are you going to plug it in? Okay. And then number three is very specific. Where are you going to plug it in? The exact place and do it over, 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 over again. Now, a little step four for those of you that listen this far, good for you. Here's the thing. Now, you can erase the little asterisk or Eiffel Tower that you put in there and move it to a different place. Instead of the fourth measure of the first line, hmm, maybe move it to the second measure of the first, of the first line. Instead of uh, the second measure of the second line, put it in the last measure. Move it around. You're going to be stunned. You're nailing this lick at this point. You're nailing it in that place. And you've gotten, the, you've gotten so the lick has sort of disappeared a bit put it in a different place, and you're kind of starting again. Uh, and to me, that's cool. That's, that's good news at how the flexibility we get, I suppose. So um, when something kicks my butt, I used to, and, and you know, sometimes still get a little depressed, like, wow, seriously, this is that hard? But now it's interesting, because when I find something that's really hard and has some resistance, I know that's where things are gonna get better. I know that when I figure this out, or put in an hour or two, or 10 of practice, like, ah, something big's gonna happen. So that's, that's what happens here. I'm glad you uh, tuned in here. Thank you so much. As I said, this is the, the, if I had to name the one practice tool that's probably gotten me the furthest, and students I've seen over and over again get some real traction going, this is it. So check this out. Please share the videos around. Please subscribe if you haven't. I love comments. I would love to see uh, some comments on YouTube about how this has worked for you. Have you done something like this before? I didn't invent this exercise, but I sure wish someone would have showed it to me a lot earlier than they did. Um, does it work for you? Have you had luck with other approaches? I would love to hear all that. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time on Digging Deeper Jazz. Thank you.